okay so now comes the questions okay we understood what is devops what and all is expected in devops as of now but how do i start learning it okay so the best way to do is first you should be aware that now you need that nine plus one best practices for that so that when you go to a market you should be able to say i'm aware of everything that is needed in the subject now out of that you need to always pick a latest tool because we are in a such a way that we don't have time to sit and learn multiple things on the same area for example if you take configuration management there are tools right from a couple of years so instead of learning every tool take any one of the tool which is latest so that way right now i would say ansible is one of the popular tool right so if the trend changes so you should try to learn that so that way in each of the category of the best practices take one of the latest tool and once again when you are picking up a tool it should be cloud native why because right now when i say infrastructure organizations implement everything on cloud so that way whether you take a tool you need to make sure that it is running on cloud so that's where picking up a tool which is age old which is meant only for vms is not going to help in the market so you need to pick one tool which is latest and it is more about suitable for running it on cloud okay so that's where now if you take configuration management and simple infrastructure as a code terraform talk about deployment orchestration kubernetes so that's how take a tool which is most popular and it is cloud native okay then the next again a big question that everyone will have okay i want to switch my profile is coding needed for devops engineers or is it needed for us implementing the devops concept so first thing that you need to understand is coding is not programming because coding is needed for everyone but not programming so to be a devops engineer do you need to know the programming like java dotnet c++ no but should you need to know coding yes because what is coding now if you see so coding is all about writing some kind of syntax okay and this will be stored in some kind of file like a yaml file or a json file or a docker file because go back there is some kind of syntax and a file in which you have to write some code and store so coding is not programming so docker uses a file called docker file so whatever you write is also called as code jenkins uses jenkins file so you have to write some kind of code right terraform uses its own file called tf file so you write a hcl code ansible uses yaml file kubernetes uses yaml file prometheus uses yaml file you take any tool in devops there is a syntax there is a text file in which you are going to put some syntax that syntax is what we call it as code so don't get confused between coding and programming and not just that now the next question comes okay so you are telling coding means not a program it's some syntax that you are going to write then what is script so this is where scripting is a different whole thing wherein it's also going to help you to do some automation okay so now when you are saying you are learning devops with respect to each tool there is some syntax that you are going to run that is what you are learning not just two to three commands you should know how to develop a docker file you should know how to develop a jenkins file you should know how to develop a yaml file for ansible or kubernetes okay now, along with this you also need to know scripting because scripting can help you to do lot of automations which a tool cannot do because if you actually look at every tool can help you in some automation but there are some small small automations which a tool will not help so in that case what will happen you have to use some kind of script in your day to day to support but again it is not mandatory only when it is needed you should be able to do that activity okay so in that way as a devops engineer what is needed you have to be aware of any one of the scripting okay so that you can take anything if you are a beginner then we would say take up with shell but if not you are also a developer you already know programming like c and java then you can pick up something like python or java or go language but the focus is as a devops engineer when you are doing automation definitely at some level depending on the complexity there might be a scripting that you have to write which can be two lines or four lines 
but when you need you should know any one of the scripting is sufficient but once again is it mandatory i would say no but that's how the more and more the skilled you are the more you know you can sell yourself in a better way in the market because it's just like what i say you are giving a buffet to an interviewer okay so when you go to an interview you're going to sell them like hey i know all this 9 plus 1 best practice plus 1 scripting that's where when you are expecting a package they will always be able to give you more than that or in other words you talk about your friends taking x amount and y amount that's because the more you know the more they can give okay so eventually now if you come back how is that you should become a devops engineer now regardless of your experience whether you are fresher or an intermediate or an experienced person the first thing you should know is as in foundation you should be aware of some basic things like you should be aware of linux and you should be aware of some basic version controlling tool like git because these are the very fundamental things when you start writing your docker file jenkins file kubernetes you need to store it in git right so those are the basic things now after this is your core skills for devops and this is where your nine best practices comes okay so in that nine best practices what are the latest tools learn any one of them so that you can get the end to end understand okay and then get into cloud ops now this is where in order to implement the devops you should be aware of any one of the cloud and the operation so pick whether it is aws or azure whatever that you want and try to learn the operation side of it okay and what after this is where scripting because now once you know all the automation you will also know what are the small small gaps where you can help with scripting in that pick up any one of the scripting okay so that way without scripting will i get a job you will get a job but you need to understand the profile when the expectations are high salary will also be high okay so that's how now when you get into a market the more and more that you know you can tell yourself that you are a full fledged devops engineer wherein you are not just talking about scripting or basic cloud or basic tools you know everything and this is where now if you go into the market your road map should look like first understand in devops what and all is needed and you know the foundation first the core first after that and then get into cloud ops and then scripting once you do try to take some projects and try to learn each of this area or combine those and try to automate everything end to end okay and then try to put it into your profile because devops is not different all these things in some level you might have already been done in your company so you should know how your current work profile adds value so whether you are one plus experience or 10 plus or 15 years you can showcase that you have been already doing all these things at some level in your current job so that way it will add value and with that when you go into a market there are different levels depending on your experience in devops okay so i'm just taking it in only devops because now for example you might be a 10 plus guy now you can put a 3 plus or a 4 plus only in devops and then you can go more as a senior engineer because if you try to put all your 10 years in devops then can eventually become a architect or a very senior staff in devops so that's how market pays you for the skill set that you have okay not just for the overall experience and that is how the more and more that you try to showcase by learning and projecting your value will be added and eventually over a period of time you can choose to be a individual contributor or you can also be a managerial role because devops doesn't mean it's only for individual contributor even as a manager everyone needs to know technical stuff so that's how you understand where you are what are the things you need to learn how do you put into your profile and project it okay so with the help of this it is going to be easy for you to know at what level you have to apply because many times what happen you have experience but you know don't know at what level you are trying because if you take for example for those with 6 years 10 years you try to put everything in the market then for example if i am going to hire you then i will check for the complete experience which is where you have to be very clear in telling my overall experience is different my relevant experience is different if you are combining your relevant and overall then expectation will be the same obviously your pay will also be specific to this okay 
So now, what is that you have to do? As a DevOps engineer, if you are going to a company, you never know what tool that they are going to give because these are all the problems that they want help. And that is where now when you are learning DevOps, you need to learn all those best practices with one tool at least in them and try to do end to end. Getting it? Okay. So this is the whole process of what we are talking about the architecture program. So now if you go back and look into the curriculum, whatever been I've been talking so far is what you would be seeing. Okay. So what specifically we do? So all the classes will be live, but we know that most of the time it will not be easy to digest a lot of things. So we record each and every day's live classes and you can go back and look into this play and you can listen, watch it and then practice anytime you want. And you're going to get completely a scenario based. So what do you mean by scenario? It's not like I said, oh, take this command and run, you become a DevOps engineer. So you need to know what to use the tool, why to use, what problem it is solving, how to maintain it, okay? And how it can be integrated to another tool. So that's the way that you should know about scenarios. And learning projects should be in such a way, it should be relevant to what you're already doing. And that's what we give you. So that you take this project, and when you explain it to someone, it should be as if you have really worked. Right, not just for namesake, but you should know all those things and you should have practiced and that's how it will be easy for you to project. Okay, and career mentoring is another plus point that we do because now when I'm explaining, everything is the same. But when you try to put your profile, it should not be the same because you might have a different experience, you might have a different experience. So you should know what is your strength, what is your current background. Depending on that, you should add specific projects in addition to this and then you should be able to project so that's how for those people who are already experienced your current work experience adds value okay and then we definitely know that this cannot be done in one time so in case for any one of you you want to come back again to the live class and do we always give a six months validity but this doesn't mean your videos is given only six months we will be giving the recorded videos that you can use for a longer time but the live classes that we are trying to tell you is that anytime within six months, you can come back and take because assume you take the course once. You were not able to practice and you need more time and you want to come back and definitely you can come back. OK, so that's the whole purpose of what we are doing. Anyway, let me stop it here. Any questions?